So I'm sure that most of my viewers have already heard about this, but on February 1st, Amnesty International released a devastating report detailing the horrific human rights violations against the Palestinian people by Israel's government. And this report does not mince words. It explicitly calls this apartheid, with Amnesty International Secretary General Agnes Kalamard saying, Our report reveals the true extent of Israel's apartheid regime, whether they live in Gaza, East Jerusalem, and the rest of the West Bank, or Israel itself. Palestinians are treated as an inferior racial group and systematic deprived of their rights. We found that Israel's cruel policies of segregation, dispossession, and exclusion across all territories under its control clearly amount to apartheid. The international community has an obligation to act. Now, predictably, our apartheid-denying State Department rejected this report, but during a press conference, State Department spokesperson Ned Price was asked a really interesting question by an AP reporter. Why is it that the State Department has cited human rights violations that Amnesty International has found when it comes to Iran, Cuba, Ethiopia, China, but yet you're rejecting their report when it comes to a state we're aligned with. What's with this here? It seems like a double standard. And as you're going to see, uh, Price had absolutely no way of responding because he was backed into a corner. This proves that the United States government doesn't actually care about human rights. Take a look. This was just incredible to watch outside reports but you certainly cite them quite a bit uh in your own human rights report and i went back and looked and you know in terms of uh, just the last human rights report cited amnesty international on ethiopia on cuba on china and xinjiang on iran on burma on syria on cuba and that those references uh are endorsements of what the this group, Amnesty, and then other groups as well that are cited as well, have found. Why is it that without taking a stand or, or making a judgment about uh, the findings of this particular report, why is it that all, all criticism of Israel is from these groups is, is almost always rejected by the U.S. and yet accepted, welcomed, and endorsed when it comes when when it comes out when the criticism is is of other countries, notably countries with which you have significant policy differences. Matt, I would make a couple points. Number one, when we include a footnote in something like these are footnotes, Ned. These are when we these are, when we these when are we cite when we cite, cite yeah. which uh, it's a game of semantics, I suppose. But whether you call it a citation or a footnote, well, when it says in the report, Amnesty International found this X yes. in Xinjiang with the Uyghurs. And we th and, and and we determine that we we think that it's a genocide, and you guys come out and so, cite that and say, well, we also agree that it's a that genocide. is a far cry, Matt. From I'm saying, I'm not from saying, saying that the same we thing, have a comprehensive agreement with a third so party report so that it's was produced just, by an so outside group. When, so it's just when it's criticism of Israel that you feel free to d disagree. Where, where have you ever disagreed with an amnesty report? or a human rights report on a country such as Iran. This or, is not, uh, Matt, this is, this is not about any outside group. Uh, this is about our vehement disagreement with a certain finding in a report by an outside group. Okay. Uh, there are plenty of times where uh, we cite, as you said, outside groups in our own reports. We cite the facts that they have uncovered, that they have put forward. But I don't think you're going to find any citation in any State Department document. Uh, and I don't think I'll regret saying this, it says the department agrees on a comprehensive basis with absolutely everything uh, that's in this report. Devastating, just devastating. I don't have much commentary to add. That was just, that was excellent reporting. That right there is what speaking truth to power looks like. I mean, that was so embarrassing for the State Department that I don't know how other news outlets aren't talking about this. That reporter made a phenomenal point. The State Department has cited the findings from Amnesty International before, but now when it comes to one of our allies, all of a sudden you're rejecting what they say. So why are you doing this? What gives? This is an inconsistency there. This is a double standard. This is hypocritical. And there's, there's just no way that you can meaningfully respond to that because it's, it's a gotcha. They got you right there. You, you can't come out of this corner. You can't back away from this. It's your checkmated. Every single news outlet should be talking about this exchange and demanding the Biden administration respond. Actually explain to us 
why you're rejecting the findings here when it comes to one of our allies' human rights abuses, but you oftentimes will cite this same organization when discussing human, human rights violations from countries who are not our allies. Perhaps we have economic relationships with them, but they're not really our allies in the way that Israel is, so what gives? We all know what gives. It's a rhetorical question to ask this question, but the U.S. government should be forced to respond because it's a double standard. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that we don't care at all about human rights. We will cite Amnesty International and what they say are human rights abuses so long as it's convenient. But the second it becomes inconvenient, we reject it. And what do we do? We accuse them of anti-Semitism. We accuse them of not being as accurate. It's just, uh, this was a really great video. And if we had more reporters in this country hold people in power accountable like this, I don't know that the country would be in a better position, but at least the American people would be more educated. Because that right there is something that you can't recover from. If I was Ned Price, I would never want to do another press conference again. I would resign because that was embarrassing. He was not prepared for that question when he should have been. But it just kind of goes to show you how brazen the U.S. government is. They're just brazenly hypocritical, and they don't even care. And it's not like the Biden administration is unique here. This has been consistently the case, depending on, uh, regardless, rather, of who the president is. Democrat, Republican, it's the same thing. Support Israel unconditionally, give them weapons as they carry out this apartheid regime, and, you know, condemn other human rights abusers. It's just... It's ridiculous, but this was such a great video, and I hope that you um, found it as satisfying as I did, because I really like to see government officials held accountable, and that right there is what accountability looks like. I really, really commend this reporter here.